Dead Space, the classic survival horror game originally released in 2008, recently received a remake, which completely rebuilt the game from the ground up to offer improvement to the gameplay, level design, storytelling, and of course enhance the visuals. With support for ray tracing, DLSS, FSR, variable ray shading, and many other features. So today and as usual, we will examine every graphic setting and dive into the performance and visual differences of each one. So without any further ado, let's get going. Now let's start by addressing some visual and performance issues. First, the game suffers from stuttering problems, and I don't think they are related to shader compilation, because the first time I run the game, it took some time to compile its shaders. But what's happening here is traversal stuttering, which occur each time you're transitioning from one area to another one. You can see here when I reach this point, which is a trigger point for the next area to load up, the game stutters, as you can see here with these spikes in the frame time graph. The next problem is VRS or variable rate shading which ruins texture's quality when using FSR or DLSS, and there was no option to turn it off, but I am happy to report that they patched the game and now there is an option to turn off VRS. So if you are using DLSS or FSR, make sure to turn off VRS as this won't affect your performance that much, but it will improve texture's quality. In fact, even if you are using TAA, I don't recommend turning on VRS. You can see here how this option affects every surface in the game and makes everything flickers, and the performance gain you get from this option is not that big. And with that out of the way, let's start with anti-aliasing. Here we have the option to use native TAA, DLSS or FSR. Comparing the two TAA options low and high, we can see that both options looks identical and the performance is also similar. Now let's take a look at FSR and DLSS, starting with shimmering. Both DLSS and FSR do a great job at eliminating shimmering compared to TAA, but maybe you notice the degradation of details and textures with DLSS and FSR. Because even with VRS off, for some reason, using DLSS or FSR in this game lower textures quality. You can see here that TAA have better textures and clarity compared to DLSS. Ghosting is another problem this time with DLSS only. You can see here that DLSS have this visible ghosting and trailing when moving the camera compared to FSR which does not have this issue. The game shipped with DLSS 2.5.0 and in fact you can fix this problem by applying DLSS 2.5.1 DLL. You can see here that with this new version the ghosting problem is gone. Now I recommend leaving FSR or DLSS as your last resource for performance, because TAA looks better in general, and if you are planning to use DLSS, I recommend applying DLSS 2.5.1 to improve motion clarity. Light quality controls light scattering or how far it can spread, and sometimes using low can cause complete darkness in some scenes as you can see here. Medium, high, and even ultra looks very similar, and that's also reflected on the performance side. Where going from low to medium, high, and ultra can drop FPS by 9%. Here I recommend medium. Shadow quality in this game works a little bit different. It does not change the quality of any shadow map, including dynamic shadows, or even Isaac's shadow. It only affects contact shadows like here, where low disable them and medium and higher options enable them. And it also affects the distance at which shadows are rendered, as you can see here between medium, high and ultra. And as a result, the performance hit of this setting is not that big because going from low to even ultra drop FPS by around 2 or 3%. 
Here I recommend medium or high shadows. Reflection quality adjusts the quality of cube map and screen space reflections. Reflections in this game are not great looking. As you can see here, they look grainy and pixelated, and dropping to medium can lower this look a little bit. Performance wise, going from low to medium costs nothing, but going higher to high and ultra costs 9%. Here I recommend medium reflections. Next we have volumetric resolution, which adjusts the resolution of volumetric fog. And this game relies heavily on volumetric effects for its presentation, and you'll see these effects almost everywhere. Visually, low and medium looks a little bit flickery compared to high and ultra. Performance-wise in a scene with a lot of volumetrics, this setting is demanding when using ultra, because going from low to medium drop FPS by a small 1-2% to to high 9% but to ultra a big 20%. Here I recommend low or medium and if you have enough performance to spare, go for high and avoid ultra. In ambient occlusion, we have three options, off, SSAO and RTAO which is the only form of ray tracing in this game. Comparing the three options visually, we can see that SSAO does a decent job at covering most surfaces, but RTAO looks a lot better. Performance-wise, going from off to SSAO doesn't cost much, around 1 or 2%. And to RTAO around 9%. Here, if you can use RTAO, I highly recommend doing so. But if you can't, SSAO should look fine. Just avoid turning off ambient occlusion. And the last setting we have is depth of field, with two options, low or high. You'll see this effect mostly during some few cutscenes. And performance-wise, going from low to high can drop FPS by 10%. Here both options are fine, since this setting only affects cutscenes and not gameplay. But if you are facing some FPS drops during cutscenes, I recommend dropping this one to low. Now let's take a quick look at dynamic resolution scale. You can see here that I am below 60 FPS, so if I want to use dynamic resolution scale to hit 60 FPS all the time, I can go to the graphics menu and I can enable dynamic resolution scale and here I can choose my uh, frame rate target according to my refresh rate so for example now I have the game running at 120 FPS, 120 Hertz 50% mean that I am targeting 60 FPS so if I go and I enable this you can see here that I am nowhere near 60 FPS. Even I can see that the resolution is dropping a little bit, but it's not dropping enough to maintain 60 FPS. So uh, I don't think you should rely on dynamic resolution scale in this game. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's do a quick comparison between ultra preset and optimized settings. Here at this scene, you can see that optimized settings should give you around 26% more performance compared to ultra preset. Dead Space is an excellent remake. It stays true to the original game's horror and ancient scenes while also offering a more polished experience. Visually, the game looks great, especially the dynamic lighting and volumetric effects. It has some visual issues like reflections, VRS, and bad implementation of DLSS and FSR, but overall I think Dead Space Remake is a must-play for fans of the original and also a great introduction to the franchise for new players. And with that, we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if not, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for any future videos. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.